an ancestor. So if, how would we find it? Well, biologists in the room will know that chromosomes have nifty little markers. They have markers called centromeres, which are DNA sequences that are used to separate them during mitosis, and they have cool little DNA sequences on the end called telomeres. What would happen if a pair of chromosomes got fused? Well, what would happen is the fusion would put telomeres where they don't belong in the center of the chromosome, and the resulting fused chromosome should actually have two centromeres. One of them might become inactivated, but nonetheless, it should still be there. So we can scan our genome, and you know what? If we don't find that chromosome, evolution's in trouble. Well, Fusion in humans. Now let me explain so you can see why I find it disturbing. Our DNA is clustered together into bundles of DNA called chromosomes. Humans have 23 pairs of them, while chimpanzees have 24 pairs. Yet, we were supposed to have diverged from a common ape-like ancestor. So the evolutionary argument is that, somewhere along the way, humans fused two chromosomes together. DNA is made up of four chemical letters, A, G, T, and C, all put together into a long, double-sided strand. At the end of the strands in the chromosomes, there are long sequences called telomeres. Telomeres are markers for the end of the DNA strand, and they are simply thousands of repeats of six letters, T-T-A-G-G-G. So if our ancient ancestor fused two chromosomes together into one, we should see a telomere sequence right in the middle of a chromosome, right? The chromosome pairs also have a binding point where the pairs link, called centromeres. There should be two centromeres in a fused chromosome, but a chromosome can only have one, so evolution would need to deal with the second centromere, but there should be evidence of a former centromere in a fused chromosome. Dr. Kenneth Miller has been a very vocal proponent of this theory and even brought this up at the Kitzmiller-Dover trial claiming that there are telomeres right at the spot where the fusion allegedly happened on human chromosome number two. Obviously, Dr. Venema is teaching the same thing in his classes on evolution, but the reason this is disturbing is because it's dead wrong. An article put together by doctors Tompkins and Bergman is available for anyone who cares to read, detailing just how wrong this claim is. For example, the alleged telomere in the number two chromosome isn't a telomere. Now, there are a few single telomere-like sequences, but those are fairly common in DNA, and they certainly don't make a, up a cluster of thousands in a row. Furthermore, there are these telomere sequences before and after the alleged fusion site. Did it fuse more than one place? Thirdly, almost all of the chromosomes have these telomere lookalikes. Well, just how many fusions has the human race undergone in its history? Fourth, if there was two chromosomes that fused end to end, we should see thousands of telomere sequences back to back, with a good chunk of them reversed to the first. Of course, this is non-existent. With the release of the data from the ENCODE project, which I mentioned last week, it turns out the alleged telomere sequence Surprise! Has function. In other words, it's not a telomere. It is actually genes, pseudogenes, and open reading frames. Fifth, the DNA sequences in the chimpanzee chromosomes that allegedly fused should then match the human fused chromosome sites on either side of the fusion zone. But once again, this prediction failed miserably. Lastly, the whole point of telomeres is to keep chromosomes from fusing to each other. As for the centromere, the evolutionary researchers have claimed that there is a badly deteriorated centromere on chromosome 2, but upon further investigation, the alleged degenerate centromere is just plain not there. Dr. Venema really should know about this and not be teaching such falsehoods, but perhaps he shouldn't be blamed, seeing as how such false teaching is pervasive, even included in this high school textbook being used right here in Canada. Please also notice that in the same paragraph to the textbook, they also make the flat-out false claim that chimpanzee and human genomes are 99% identical. Seeing as how the chimpanzee genome is 12% longer than the human genome, it is an obvious mathematical impossibility that they be 99% identical. Such claims wouldn't work in the grocery store. So how is it they are getting away with it in high school, college, and university science classes? A lot of this material is old news, dating back as far as 2003. Dr. Vedema wrote in his essay, an ancestor. So if, how would we find it? 
Well, biologists in the room will know that chromosomes have nifty little markers. They have markers called centromeres, which are DNA sequences that are used to separate them during mitosis, and they have cool little DNA sequences on the end called telomeres. What would happen if a pair of chromosomes got fused? Well, what would happen is the fusion would put telomeres where they don't belong in the center of the chromosome, and the resulting fused chromosome should actually have two centromeres. One of them might become inactivated, but nonetheless, it should still be there. So we can scan our genome, and you know what? If we don't find that chromosome, evolution's in trouble. 